to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome everyone to Monday, March 2nd. If you have any questions, comments, or business with this body, come up and give us your name and address and state your business. The roll call, please. Mayor Cedar? Here. Foley? Here. Kinsfatter? Here. Krebs? Kuffa? Here. Laporte? Here. McCartney? Here. I have a motion to excuse Krebs, please. I would make that motion. I'll support. All right, the motion's made supported to excuse member Krebs. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Number four, consent agenda city council minutes of February 16th, 2015, regular meeting. Recommendation approved. So moved. Support. Motion made support. Questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We'll go to number five, ordinances resolution A. This is an ordinance introduction amendment to zoning ordinance to change the zoning classification of property 678 North Riverside. Just taking this. Mr. Downey, you want to uh, Your Honor, this matter is uh, before uh, before the council on recommendation of the Planning Commission to amend the city zoning ordinance to um, uh, change the description of uh, zoning at 678 North Riverside to plan unit development. This matter was on before city council back in January, and the uh, discussion at that time was... Uh, the, the, the matter was tabled until tonight in order for council to make themselves more familiar with these details. But uh, what's before council tonight is the uh, introduction of the ordinance. Uh, if introduced, then the ordinance would be uh, voted on for adoption at the March 16th meeting. Thank you, Mr. Downey. And we can have discussion with this if anybody needs anything else to clarify or did you bring anybody while he wants to make a couple of quick statements or John? Good evening. I'm John Monte from Project Control Engineering here with uh, Wally Evans, the owner, and also uh, Herb Blackstock is the architect for the project. I wanted to give you just a little bit more information here. Basically, um, the reason that I wanted to give you this is at the last meeting, I believe it was, there was a little discussion on like how many properties were rezoned um, to multifamily, what, what took place. In the, in the immediate area of Mr. Evans, these are just identifying the multifamily that surrounds him right now. So we just wanted to point those units out that these do still exist in this area. and. And again, just uh, the basis of this has been that uh, when Mr. Evans originally purchased the property, it was zoned multifamily. He was aware of that. He looked at what he could do as an investment in the future. Um, he purchased it accordingly. He looked at what units were next door to him and what was in the surrounding area. And when the Planning Commission decided to uh, reevaluate their master plan and rezone areas, those things certainly happen. He did protest that. However, he was kind of assured that under the PUD process, there was still a mechanism that he could s still do something similar to what he wanted to do. Um, but it gave the city actually more control instead of in a, in a multifamily zoning where you could get quite a few more units on the property. The city actually gained more control by going through the PUD process. Um, and puts a little bit more limitation on it. So what he's asking for isn't anything that he didn't feel he originally had the ability to come in and do when he purchased the property. He didn't just move to this town and say, I want to change your ordinance or change what you guys have in mind. Um, it was originally zoned that when he purchased it. So this gives you a little idea of what's still there uh, in the immediate area. If you have any questions for me, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Thank you, John. Anybody else? Uh, Chris, 
Chris Breeden, 700 North Riverside. You've heard most of my comments, but I didn't realize there was open open forum tonight. But uh, just in summary, from my aspect, is uh, when uh, Mr. Evans' mother bought the property about seven years ago, uh, he had seven years to make that decision uh, when it was zoned R3. The city, I think, still made the right decision when they changed the zoning, but he had to request to have a zoning change. The zoning was R1. So he had all that time to do it, and then when he inherited the property, um, he decided after the fact, after the zoning was changed, that he wanted to change it. So I think the city has the right to say, no, we're going to leave it as R1. We're not going to put multiples there in the neighborhood where it is. I don't think it has anything to do with the fact that there's a few other existing apartments that were there. The city changed five other residents from R3 to R1. Uh, and he did indicate that he felt the that the property or the home was just getting too large for him and I, I i know the property is exactly the same size as it's always been since it was built and i think the the, the question is is the property is not is not getting too large he wants to expand the property but he also wants three units to, so that three people pay for the property so i hope the city makes the right decision thank you thank you thank you john thank you chris One of the things the city was concerned about at the time, and I can understand it, they didn't want it to end up like the property south of me, where there were, and when, when I owned the property, there were six renters on that property, and it was a very small piece of property, um, and a very little yard, very little parking. It, it didn't meet any good requirements, and my intent was always to build a three unit condominium the house has three cubes and it is large um, the city at the time said I could do nine or eleven I never wanted to do nine or eleven I wanted to be a nice quiet senior citizen people my age type development so that's the way we always approached it when the rezoning started I came in and made a presentation to the Planning Commission and um, was contacted after saying we'd really like to get rid of the three because we don't want nine or eleven and I wouldn't either I didn't want anything like that on the water like is next to me um, and they said a PUD could work for both of us so that's why we started down that method to make it a PUD something that would really be nice close to town and would be people that are probably in their 60s and 70 year, years old so um, I didn't, we didn't change anything between my mother's ownership and mine. It's always been our three. Any questions from council? Mr. Lepore, you serve, you serve on the Planning Commission. Do you want to give us any insight as to what happened in that process? Well, we worked on it a long time. Um, we were cleaning up the zoning map to meet our, our uh, ordinances, that type of thing. And, and Mr. Evans is right that we looked at it as the number of um, rental units around it that we decided that we wanted to clean that up and preserve the neighborhood. Um, I have mixed emotions on it. I, you know, I can certainly understand his... Uh, uh, position on it and I understand on the Planning Commission when we looked at it on the Planning Commission we're governed by the certain rules does it meet the current ordinances or does it not and it uh, did go to Planning Commission it passed there because it met the uh, qualifications of uh, that the zoning rule that we were asked a couple of questions we've heard from all the neighbors uh, the neighbors are, are they don't want 
rentals in the area. They don't want any more than what's already there, that type of thing. Um, we wrestled with it a long time, and at our last meeting, Mr. McCartney was exactly right. We worked on it for almost two months, and you got laid down the information what uh, that day and didn't have enough time to go through it. Uh, I, right. I don't know what else to say on it. Yeah. We've been we've been through it twice. And Mr. Boyd, I see back there. You, you serve on the planning commission. Do you want to add anything to this discussion, or are you all set? You guys have the job to do. The planning commission did their job. Everybody else did their job. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
can I ask a question? Certainly. I guess uh, Mike or, or, or D or, or whoever, um, there was a group of homes in this area that were all R3, is that, is that correct? Yes. And if, if a resident came to you when, when they got this letter and they said, hey, look, I, I really don't want mine changed, um, how many residents in this area came, came forth and did that? Mm, uh, no, no, the only one that came forward was Wally. Okay. And that was after it was done. No, no, there were some more. Not on the river side. Across the street, right, Dean? And they weren't changed. I believe there were some three that requested not being changed that did not get changed. Um, one would be right on the corner of Brown and Riverside, uh, Brown and Second Street, which would be John Amick's old house, and then um, um, on Third Street, um, Dr. Cass and Sarns. Oh, he didn't get changed, um, but really, what we were all what the the intent of the the map was to get to where we were with the comprehensive plan that that got done the year before. Okay, um, you know, if you go into the zoning book and look at the restrictions between R two and R one and R one A and R two, it, it's considerable and. Basically, what we had, we had pretty much all downtown. Half the town was R2, okay, which makes it hard for them to be able to do a lot of, a lot of things other than have two, two family residents on a 60 by 90 lot. It doesn't make sense, right. you know. Um, the R2s, you need to be able to park four cars on it. Um, and that was the biggest problem that we had, and, and that's why we... You know, a year went by after we got the comprehensive plan done. Uh, Terry Meyer and I kind of thought, well, it's time that we get the zoning map changed to reflect what what we did in the comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. and that's how the, that got done. Well, I guess my, 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 my question is pretty specific. I mean, there was a few houses in this area that were R3. Um, three of them... Um, said we, we don't want to be changed to R1 correct and 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 you let them stay at R3 um, well the one is <coughs> R2 okay and two are R3 and then mm -hmm. mr. Evans came and he requested to to leave his alone uh -huh. and it did get changed and it did get and, and and the reason that you you let the other people stay versus, um, versus well this case um, well, I, and, and I yeah. guess let, let me let me just keep going because what what I'm hearing over here is that they were assured by the city. The, the word the word assured by the city was was That's used. That's incorrect. Um, I'm I'm just saying what what the man said. Mr. Monty said that they were assured by the city that there's another way to do this. Okay, so uh, you 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 use that word assured. That is correct. Your PUD process yeah. allows it. Which is the okay. le that right. says legal right. Which you and I have, have kind of talked yeah. about that. Yeah. And also they've, they've, they've done everything that is required to, to ask for a, if I can use the word variance, um, and, and they've met all the criteria. Yes. So, I mean, I, I just want to make sure that everybody out there has, has all these facts straight, that they're not the only R3 um, that were turned down or asked for forgiveness, if I can use that word. How is it, D, that they did ch not change the other R3s, but they did decide to change the Evans property? Um, well, unbeknown to, unbeknown to me at the time, um, the one already is an R2 on the corner. And then uh, John Amy's house has got three units or four units in it. It's got four kitchens in it the way wow. it exists right now. And the the fellow that owns it, he kind of wanted to stay. He says, I have no intentions right now to changing it, but I may do it as an income at some later date. And basically, he th those are adjacent to R3s, so 
that was a pretty simple decision for the Planning Commission to make. Um, you know, all I can say is that, I mean, without getting political or anything like that, the Planning Commission did their job. The Council should do their job, right. introduce it, come back in two weeks, vote yes or no, and let the ball, chips fall where they may. I mean, you know, don't skirt the issue just because it's political. That's a, I mean, well, I'm actually not trying to skirt the issue. No. I'm, I'm just well. trying to get the facts. I mean, because the sheet you gave me showed a lot of our, our three homes up, up in this particular area. Correct. And, you know, and I guess I'm going to make the uh, motion to introduce the, uh, the ordinance. Um, I don't know if you need me to read the whole paragraph, but I'll, I'll, presented. I'll make the motion to introduce the ordinance as presented. I'm going to second it. All right. The motion's been made and supported. To introduce the zoning ordinance to change the zoning classification on property 678. And before we vote, realize, and I know people know this, but just so this is out there, the vote tonight does not indicate right. what happens in March 16th. April 16th. April 16th. Is it March 16th? Okay. Next Sorry. Meeting. The next meeting? Mm -hmm. March 16th. All right. Is there any other comments or questions? Call the roll, please. Foley? Yes. Kinspotter? Yes. Cuffa? Yes. Laporte? Yes. McCartney? No. Cedar? Yes. Motion carried. All right. Again, let me assure people that this is <coughs> just phase one. This is not the passing of any ordinance, it's just the introduction. All right, we'll go to number six Courts Administration, Mr. Booth. Hey, I have a few items uh, this evening, Your Honor. Um, at the beginning of the meeting, I passed out a, a debt schedule. Um, I will come back for the next meeting and, and print one that's a little bit larger for you to, uh, to, uh, to view. Um, some of the numbers are quite small. I, however, I did want to get it out to you and um, want to make sure that you um, notice that the only piece that's associated with a, uh, a, a millage is for roads. Uh, the piece is uh, currently um, 2.4724 mills, and it's used to make our annual debt payment for, for the road uh, bond. Uh, payments on that piece will be uh, completed in November of 2016. <clears throat> I don't know if you have any questions on the schedule, if you can read it, or if you don't, we'll go over it again as we get closer to talking more about roads. Are we going to be talking about roads tonight? Uh, I had not planned on it tonight. Um, other than to give an update on one, I one other item. We had we had talked the last meeting about having language written in, in a, um, for our next election, which would be I believe August. May. May. So there's um, an election are, in May, but are we going to make that? We can't make that. No. Okay, we so the next election we can. How how much time do we need to start talking about this and get and get it on the next ballot? The ballot proposal wording needs to be submitted by May 12th. So we have two months. To get language and a plan to put together for our road, our road repair program, are we going to are we going to move in that direction? It's the only direction we can move. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I just think we we're going to need some I think some meetings to get together, some language written, so a plan put together, and um, it's already March, so uh, I, I, this is a good first start. But you know, I'd like to see us get somewhere <coughs> this, else. This is not really roads; it's okay. more of just well. But the information the on the mate on the on the 2016 um, millage um, falling off is good information to have. Okay. Can I kind of piggyback that one? Absolutely. It, 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 I sent you an email the other day. Yes, I you received uh, two of them on the same. Yours is one. Okay. All right. Do you know what the answer is? To, you, so I guess I'm I'm going to step back a little bit. You're you're referring to the millage and what we're going to. Um, my, or well, no, I'll, I'll, no, I'll just I'll tell everybody what my question was. My, my, my question was, is on a perpetual millage, um, let's just <coughs> say, for example, a perpetual millage uh, passed, and we were, we were getting $400,000, let's just make up a number, $400,000 a year forever. <coughs> can you, and forever is forever, can, can you take that money and, and mortgage it uh, for a, let's just say a $25 million loan. That, that's what my question was. Okay. Um, currently the 2.4 or 5 um, 
covers a debt that uh, debt piece that was issued was a 10-year piece for 3.45 million so um, I don't think you could get something that large but again I think you know with our next meeting which I'd like to say we'll be with our next council mm -hmm. meeting prior to um, that's some of the things I'd like to talk about what are, you know what number do we want um, that makes sense to um, where we can actually get some some additional roads repaired whether that means total reconstruction or caps well, I'm not or trying to nail you down on what we're doing I'm yeah. just I'm just asking can you can you get a loan based on hey look million. I can I can pay you four hundred thousand a, a year mm -hmm. will you loan me 25 million for 45 years or whatever it works out to be and I don't know if you can that's that's just a question they will like always lo loan you money it's just okay yeah, what, interest well, rate, what makes right? what makes right uh, what's the right decision and do we want to pay um, for interest or do we want to perpetually continue and improve roads um, I know with the last piece we had we, we issued debt and then we haven't done a whole lot in 10 years so my concern would be is if you fixed let's say you fixed all the roads at some point most of those roads would all go bad at the same time if you right. don't do anything to them well that's a three-legged stool uh, that the first leg is fixed in the roads the second leg is Maintaining, maintaining the roads, the third leg is funding it. Exactly. So but we have to have those three millage, pieces. You, you definitely can't can't re you can't maintain them and you can't fund fund repairs. So what we're kind of hoping for as well is maybe by time we um, um, we'll have May first vote other way. Yeah, we can have a state. discussion at, a, at another meeting. I, it, was, it was just a question. Okay. Any others on that? Okay, uh, second item is the uh, mowing lawn maintenance contract. Uh, the city is requesting bids for the 2015 and 16 mowing uh, years. Uh, sealed bids will be received until 11 a.m. on Monday, March 30th um, at the office of, office of the city clerk, which is at 547 North <coughs> I have a question for the city superintendent, if I could, Your Honor. Yep. Um, on, the lawn, on the lawn care contracts that are coming up, can we include all property that we that that include what the city mows as well on the tax payroll and let these guys cut them for what the chart what they're charging and we put our guys to work doing something else <clears throat> we are adding uh, just you know we did add Kletcher Park so that will include all parks which is uh, something that um, I, don't, I don't know when that change was made but at one point I'm sure they mowed all the parks right mm -hmm. um, that was the only one that was excluded but again we're gonna put that one in um, the only thing that will not be in will be the um, the pieces for when we have uh, someone go out and cut it because the resident isn't cutting their own lawn. The blight. It, even, the blight. If, even if we, okay, so you don't include those into the contract, but you put the, you, you have a clause in there that they would cut at a, a, a certain amount for one or two lawns. It's got to be less costly than it is to send our guys up with a, with a lawnmower and a trimmer to do um, a yard that the homeowner isn't doing. I just think we should put some thought into that. Um, it's like my pet peeve with the DPW picking up garbage. I mean, I uh -huh. think we should be utilizing these guys to to maintain streets and to do other things and, and not cut grass is my is my point, Mike. I, whether or not you've thought about that, it just it came to me when we we're sitting here talking about this stuff. I just would rather it, see that. So. It has been discussed, and uh, I don't know if that's going to be something we'll have to address more with the contract uh, once we close that out, contract negotiations, um, and not take necessarily take work away from them. But um, okay. again, the one we could because it was a um, it was a park, and uh, absolutely, it's it's uh, one that at some point I think will we'll probably need to happen okay. if, if we can. <clears throat> Final item uh, that I have is a crack seal machine. Uh, we've had some conversation about it. Um, the crack seal machine is still at the DPW. Uh, for any of those council members that have not made it over, that would like to take a peek at it. Um, it D. He's, did he say what day he's going to pick it up? Uh, it'll be what, at least some day this week. Okay, so if you'd like to arrange something, I can go over with you or I can have someone meet you there, whatever you'd like. Um, at our meeting on March 16th, I'll uh, have an analysis for council as to the purchase of a new used, new or used piece of equipment, and then I'll also take a look at uh, whether we could lease it. And uh, Mike uh, from from the company that we talked to, National, 
Um, he came back today with, with some answers. I didn't have time to tabulate everything, <coughs> but he did give me a price on some, some used piece of equipment uh, with various uh, hours on them. Some looked like uh, maybe one of them was a like demo unit at real low hours. Um, and then he also provided pricing. Um, we initially had some pricing, I believe, on um, if we were to lease it. And what they do is they, they charge you, they give you the piece of equipment, and you buy the, uh, the material, and they'll charge you a, a price for it. Um, and then today, he, he provided a price where if we own the piece of equipment, how much it would cost for the, the rubberized material. So now I think I have enough information where I can, I can come back and give you a comparison. So on the 16th, we could have it on the agenda to, to um, vote to approve a purchase of this crack sealer, Your Honor? If, uh, if Mr. Booth had the, had the information As long as us. everybody has all the information and can digest it in that amount of time, if not... I mean, we, we may I mean, we've nope, been beating nope, this horse nope. for a month, so I would expect, I suspect that nothing's going to really change much on the on the cost um, for the equipment. Um, so I would like to see this move forward and get off this and, and get this piece of equipment so we can maintain. So if we could have something like that, it'd be great. If not, I understand it, but I think we get too far into the end of March. Now we're probably going to be sometime into April before we even have the machine if we voted on it. No, they can't no. crack seal till May or June anyway, can they? So it's dry. Yeah. Can I, can I just ask a favor? Can you or not just forward a, a link to me for a, to, to view it online? I, I mean, I'm trying to envision it. What, does, does it kind of look like your old barbecue trailer? Yeah. Steve? Actually, it does. <laughs> I got a picture. I brought it with Oh, thanks. Some of the information there. Thank you. Okay, if no other questions, that's all I have, Your Honor. All right. Anything for Mr. Booth, anybody? All right. Mr. Downey, you have anything tonight? I have nothing this evening, Your Honor. Any city departments? All right. Authorities, boards, commissions, committees, council reps? We have no unfinished business. We'll go to number eight, new business. A, approved special events put for Salmon Steak Fishing Tournament. Yes, sure? Your Honor, I have four requests for special events that are coming up. First one I have is the uh, Salmon Steak Fishing Tournament. <clears throat> I'm in receipt for request approval of this special event. The Voyager is requesting permission to hold their annual Salmon Steak Tournament, Blue Water Sports Fishing Association, on Saturday, April the 25th. <coughs> this will be at the Voyager Salt uh, parking lot of the Voyager. All necessary documents have been received in compliance. Therefore, I respectfully recommend approval for this event. Chief, uh, are they using part of the park for a tent and inflatables? I didn't see that this year. North side, yeah. North side. Okay, I, I just noticed you didn't check the box for using no, the park. it's just the inflatables. Well, you're still using part of the park. You should check yeah, that out. an oversight. <laughs> you want to amend that? Should we hold table it? And I have it amended? It. <laughs> I'll I thought maybe something different. I didn't see support either. it. All right, the motion made in support to approve. Any questions? Amen. All in favor say aye. 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 Are you abstaining from that? Sure. All right. I'm saying. Okay. All opposed? All right. Thank you. B is the approval of the special events for Sinclair Little League Parade. Yes, Your Honor. I'm a uh, receipt for request for approval of special events permit. The St. Clair Little League is requesting permission to hold their parade on May the 2nd at 9 a.m. And they are requesting to use the same roads they did last year starting at the St. Clair High School to the Little League Park. They have also, also all the necessary documents in our compliance, and I also recommend approval for this event. Motion to approve. Support. Questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Go to see approval special events, St. Clair Association. Again, Your Honor, I uh, have a special events for the annual St. Clair Art Association for to hold their 44th annual St. Clair Art Fair on Saturday, June the 27th from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday, June 28th, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, at the Palmer Park and Riverview Plaza area. Uh, the setup will begin on Friday afternoon on the 26th. They also have all the documents in order and are in compliance with the city ordinance, and I respectfully request approval for this event. Motion to approve. Support. All right, any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Go opposed? Go to D. Temporary outdoor service permit Voyager restaurant. Chief. 
Your Honor, I'm in receipt for a request for approval for special events. The Voyager is requesting permission to hold the services for the offshore uh, boat race weekend uh, on the south parking lot of their establishment for July 23rd, 24th, 25th, and 26th. The setup being on the 23rd. They also have all the necessary documents and are compliance with city ordinance. I recommend <coughs> approval for this event. Motion to approve. Support. Aid support, any questions? You abstaining, Mr. McCord? Yes. All in favor? Say aye. aye. Opposed? Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, we'll go to E, approve appointments to the Board's Commissions. I have one appointment tonight with your consent um, to the, the Board of Review, Ryan Bush of 2227 Mallard, St. Clair, Michigan. 13-year um, career as a bank manager, has submitted an application to be put on the Somewhere if we do. Support. Motions made support. Any questions? In favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Go to number nine. Claims of accounts February 20th and 27th. Hearing no questions, Your Honor, I make a motion to approve <coughs> as presented. Support. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Go to number 10. Public comment. Anybody have anything tonight for the good of the group? All right, we'll go to number 11. Council member, Eric, anybody on the board? Have I just anything? got a quick question. Is there an update on the bridge? Are they in time or? Last update I had, they indicated they were uh, ahead of schedule, but they didn't uh, indicate uh, if that meant a, a, a day, two days, a week, or whatever. But uh, I will continue to uh, probe them for, for answers. Yeah, great. Okay. I have uh, just one question. I, I noticed in our uh, packet we have an asphalt workshop. What kind of time is that, right? <laughs> um, half day free workshops on uh, the asphalt pavement. Is that something that we might consider uh, sending someone to, you think? You around? No, I would. You offering? No, I would think it would be someone from the DPW. Well, I think D would want to go. Nice to time of the year to go to Marquette or Gaylord. <laughs> Auburn Hills looks like the closest one. Just a thought. It's free. Free is good. It's put on by the Asphalt Payment Association of Michigan. Yeah. Anybody else with anything? Go to number 12. Ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Support. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Good night, everyone. Thanks for coming. Go down,